Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back, Brandon again. Today's video, I wanna talk about the Texas Power Bar and why I don't actually recommend them for most people. Now, if you're the type that already owns one, you like it, or maybe you're dead set on getting one, this video is probably not going to be for you, but at least please hear me out. But this video is really geared towards people who are looking at powerlifting bars out there and they want to buy one bar and they're probably considering the Texas Power Bar these days because there's a ton of history behind it. I really wanna harp on the history because I feel like they're kind of living on a legacy, which isn't necessarily bad, but comparatively speaking to what's out there today, I just don't think they are as good as some of the other offerings out there. Now, way back in the 70s and 80s when there wasn't a lot of actual good powerlifting bars out there, this is where Buddy Caps and Texas Power Bars really made their name. At the time, a lot of the bars out there were Olympic style bars that were 28 millimeters or 28 and a half millimeters, had passive knurling. There wasn't a lot of bars out there with center knurling. They also weren't made as well as they are today where you'll have sleeves that have locked up because you can still buy secondhand bars that are older or vintage barbells and you'll notice that their knurling is pretty much run flat. The collars are sometimes locked up. They require a lot of upkeep because they were just bare steel. Buddy Caps came along and made a bar that was made here in the Americas, made from American steel, was known for how well it was built for the aggressive knurling, for the center knurling, for the sleeves that would spin and wouldn't get locked up and could be serviced. And they really kind of did a good solid for the powerlifting community as the go-to bar in the 80s. I'd even argue the 90s, maybe even the 2000s. And even today, in some cases, some people swear by them. And I do think they're good bars in isolation and within context. But again, if you're comparing the best powerlifting bars out there, I don't typically suggest them. Now, the main reason I don't suggest them to most people has to deal with number one, the diameter of the bar being 20 and a half millimeters, whereas most other powerlifting bars these days are 29 millimeters. Now, Buddy Caps himself will say that that half a millimeter doesn't make too much a difference. You know, that's the thickness of a credit card, which I don't know if people use these days, or a business card, which people probably definitely don't use these days, and that doesn't make that much of a difference. And again, in a small context, it doesn't, but when you're talking about a barbell that's stretched out over 86 inches, and as you get heavier and heavier loads on them, that half a millimeter does in fact make a big difference. When you combine the fact that you take a look at a Texas Power Bar collar, they tend to also be thicker than most of the other barbells on the market. So not only are you dealing with a thinner bar, which is going to have more whip, but you're further pushing the weights out, which are gonna increase the whip on the barbell itself, and I tend to find that under loads of 400 pounds or more, the whip is definitely more noticeable than on a 29 millimeter bar with a little bit of thinner collars. So that's really my main complaint against them and one of the reasons I don't suggest them for most people who are interested in a powerlifting specific barbell. Now, of course, the argument is to be made that there are federations out there that still use Texas Power Bars in competition, which again is true, but from my experience, for the most part, the Texas Power Bar in competition is only used on the bench, and even in some cases, they'll use the Texas Bench Bar instead, but on the squat, they'll use a Texas squat bar, and on the deadlift, they'll use a Texas deadlift bar. The squat bar is 32 millimeters, and it's a lot more solid, and it doesn't have as much whip, again, because it's thicker. The sleeves are also pushed out further. On a deadlift, they're 27 millimeters for more whip, and the collars are even thicker than two inches for, again, further weight distribution and thus more whip on top of it. So even though a power bar is used in competition technically, it's not used across all three lifts. And for most people, they're gonna want a bar that's gonna be good for everything and not just one specific thing. And that's why I typically will recommend a 29 millimeter bar with collars that aren't super wide and thick like the Texas Power Bar has. Now, other arguments can be made in terms of their finishes. These days, they don't have a stainless steel, which a lot of companies do. For some people, finish doesn't matter that much because they're happy with a bare steel bar, which again, a Buddy Caps Texas Power Bar is going to have nice, aggressive knurling and great feel on it because again, it's bare steel in most cases. They've recently released some Cerakote ones, so it's cool that they're starting to expand a little bit. In fact, up until like two years ago, they didn't have a website where you could order, it was only through resellers. So I'm really hopeful that at some point in time that they'll adapt and try a 29 millimeter bar with a little bit thinner collars. I think if they do, they'll see a lot more bigger adoption in their bars themselves, which isn't to say that they're not doing well already. Again, I think they're living off that legacy and a lot of people, when they think power bars, they think Texas power bars. But in my experience and for most people who are looking for the best overall power bar out there, unfortunately right now the Texas Power Bar just isn't in my top list. So hopefully that makes some sense. Let me know in the comment section below if you feel the same, if you feel differently, that's fine too. Give me some good reasons so we can argue about it on the internet because that's what the internet is for. But in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.